We naturally crave certainty, wanting to know exactly what's going to happen next. That would make life a lot easier, wouldn't it? However, planning for your retirement, there's a lot of uncertainties which can feel really uncomfortable at times. Like, how long are you going to live? How long do you need your money to last? What will the stock market do tomorrow? What will tax rates look like in your future? In today's show, we're going to talk about the five retirement uncertainties, the big mistakes I see people make, and then how you should plan for these uncertainties so you can feel comfortable in your retirement. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Money podcast with Scott Searins, teaching you how to thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. Glad to have you on Your Life, Your Money podcast, helping you thrive in life, wealth, and retirement. Talking today about planning for retirement's uncertainties. I'm sure there's a lot of them out there, Scott, right? I mean, I think we, you know, for anybody that works with an advisor, they probably think they have everything in check. And a lot of times, you know, you go through that process, but there's just so much out there in life in general that we're, we don't expect, we're not even thinking about, and boom, it, it pops up and hits us. And, and that's why it's so important to be prepared for it. Oh, I think it's just natural for all of us, right, to strive for certainty. We just want things to be black or white. And yeah, life's just not that way. I mean, in retirement planning, there's a lot of gray area. And I find for people, you know, it's really tough sometimes to be comfortable in that gray area. I mean, heck, I was a I'll say from a, an education standpoint or a degree standpoint, my degree was in civil engineering. I mean, that's that's numbers. That's factual based, right? There, it's you know this times this equals this, or this is the the formula to get to where you need to go. You know, in in retirement planning, there's just a lot of gray area, and and it's getting comfortable with understanding that um, even though you want. Or you could say that the average return is this, or the, the you know retirement income could be this. It's just the market's going to change. They're going to do something different. It's just like driving to work every day. I wish I could know exactly how long it's going to take me. I could leave at the same time every morning and get here at the same time every day. But unfortunately, school started recently, and it takes a little bit longer now. Yeah, and that's the truth. Well, that's going to be a good show today. I'm looking forward to this conversation. And I also want to encourage people to, if you haven't subscribed to Scott's Insiders List, if you go to lifemoneyshow.com, just scroll down a little bit, you'll see the uh, the boxes there to join the Insider List. All you have to do is enter your name and email address. And Scott, what can people expect uh, as part of that Insiders List? Yeah, being part of the, the Insiders List, if somebody right now is not receiving our weekly emails, they want to get on the, the Insiders List so they get those weekly emails, we're talking about investment strategies, we're talking about retirement income strategies, we're talking about tax reduction strategies. So what it can mean for people is keeping a lot more of their you know hard-earned 401k and IRA dollars with them and in their pockets versus paying it out to the the IRS. It could mean another vacation just by understanding, you know, how to maximize their retirement income. You know, it could mean retiring earlier if that's what's on your mind. So I think it's a, you know, um, if you're not part of the list, if you're not getting the weekly emails, sign up as we want to provide a lot of value to you as part of that email list. Very good. Again, just go to lifemoneyshow.com to get signed up there. All right, let's jump into today's conversation, planning for retirement's uncertainties. We know there's going to be plenty of things we have to face and deal with in retirement. We just don't know how to predict when and oftentimes to what degree. So how do you construct a plan that deals with these unpredictable things and events and these different factors that will obviously impact your retirement? So the first one here on our list is life expectancy. Obviously, Scott, if we knew how long we were going to live, we probably wouldn't need a financial advisor, right? We could probably go ahead and plan things out down to that final day. But of course, we don't know that. So how do you build a plan and construct that not knowing how long someone's going to live? And this is tough too. I, I'm not sure about you know history in your family, Ben, but for me, um, I had grandparents that lived in their 70s, in their 80s. My grandma, you know, um, my latest grandma, she lived to 95 and with improved health and technology, we're finding more and more people are living into their hundreds. And so we need a plan for longevity. We need to make sure that our, our money is growing. 
Um, and I find sometimes too, and, and here's maybe some of the, I'll call it the big mistakes. One of the big mistakes is I find people say, well, I, you know what, I'm just going to live into my 80s. And then what, ha- <laughs> but what if, right? Like what if, if you actually then live into your 90s, right? That, that could be a big mistake. Like you're not planning uh, for your money then to last as long as you actually need it to last. Um, another mistake I find is sometimes people go too conservative in their overall retirement dollars. Just because we're in retirement doesn't need necessarily mean put all of our money just on the safe side of our portfolio because sometimes re- retirement could last 20, 30 years or, or longer. So using the, I'll call it utilizing some of the outdated rules of thumb, like the rule of 100 or 115, in regards to like how much should be on the the safe and growth side of your portfolios, sometimes those outdated rule of thumbs can can kind of put you in trouble. And I, I've got a whole episode on it um, that I did um, is episode sixty seven. So if you want, go back look listen to those episodes. Talk about some of those rules of thumbs that that you don't want to that you may not want to to follow. So how do we plan for this? How do we think about longevity and making sure our money lasts as long as we will, especially when we don't know, you know, when that final day would be is one thing is, is we, we can't go too conservative. We, we, we need to make sure that we've got money in equities, helping us grow our funds to keep up with inflation, to keep up with life, to last as long as, as we will. And then the other thing that I would say that that we've implemented with our clients is what I like to call as income guardrails. And it's just understanding how to maximize the income from your accounts and then having guardrails in place. So that way, if the account value, if the market goes down, our account values go down, well, we're not shutting the income, right? We're not turning off the faucet. We're just kind of tweaking the faucet a little bit, meaning we're reducing the income for maybe a short period of time. But then as the account values go up, then we also know when to crank that faucet back on. So it's, you know, it's, it's a couple different things. It's one, making sure that you've got money in equities and money growing to support that 20, 30 year retirement. And then two, having an income strategy in place to make sure that that your money will last as long as you do. So yeah, that's the first one, life expectancy. Again, that's one that uh, you can't predict for sure. What about stock market returns, Scott? You know, I know that we're in this period now. If somebody just got into retirement and you know they've been hit with COVID pandemic and then the inflation and just the up and down of the market right now is probably getting a little stressed out about where they stand. But that's, again, why you build this kind of into your plan and have uh, your structure in place that you can withstand these year-to-year fluctuations, right? And I think this is probably one of the ones where we just would all love some certainty. We just, hey, just tell us the market's going to go up every year. We would love that kind of certainty. And, you know, you can read all the forecasts online. You can listen to all of the the economists talk about uh, what their predictions are. I actually just recently sat on a, a call this week. Um, and let's see, we had a investment person from AE Wealth, we had a person from BlackRock, Wisdom Tree, and First Trust. So we've got four big companies, and two said that the market was going to continue to go up, and two said that we haven't hit the bottom yet. So nobody knows, Ben, and, and that's just, that, you know, sitting in that call was really like, I couldn't wait to share that because it proves the point that Nobody knows what the stock market's going to do next. So rather than, because some of the big mistakes, just like you mentioned, as we go through the COVID time period, we've gone through this so far in 2022, where the market's gone down and then it goes up a little bit, then it goes down some more and it's been really choppy. That can really dig on people's emotions. It can really bring out their emotions. And then what happens is they get their emotions involved and the wrong things can happen where we're selling at the wrong time. And so rather than getting emotions involved, how we would want to plan for this uncertainty is to have an actual strategy in place that allows then you to separate those emotions of fear and greed, because that's that's what happens, 
we allow, allows you to separate those emotions from what actually logically makes sense. And the steps that you'd want to walk through is putting together your income plan, how much money you're going to need to take out of your portfolio over the next one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, basically looking through your entire life and then utilizing that income plan to determine how much you want to carve off into this pool of funds that's not subject to the same volatility as the market. Because when you mentally carve off that money, it, it almost like gives this rela relaxing feeling of, okay, hey, if the market goes down, my belief is that it will recover in five years. Well, I've already carved off five years worth of funds. I'm good for five years. I can let the other money, that growth and equity money, do what it needs to do. Yep, it went down, but now it's going to bounce back and, and come back over the over the long term as history has shown us. And so I think having that strategy and plan in place allows people to feel a lot more comfortable with the uncertainty of stock market returns. Yeah, no, it can be very it can be a very emotional uh, thing to watch too, especially what we're going through. So an important one to consider and plan for. Uh, tax rates. We uh, we do tax. We talk taxes here quite a bit. Um, but who knows, Scott, where it's heading. I mean, I don't know where it's going to be next year, uh, let alone 10, 15, 20 years from now later in retirement, right? So what are you doing from a planning perspective to have somebody in place so that no matter what happens with the future tax rates, they'll be in a good spot? Yeah, well, I think uh, one thing is certain in this is that Congress is just as unpredictable as the stock market, meaning we're, we're pretty sure that at some point in time, they're going to change rules and laws again that will make the tax rates either go up or go down. And we're not sure what, what that direction is yet. Now, to me, the, the big mistake that I see people make is saving all of their money into one tax bucket. For instance, I have a client... Um, where when they first when we first met and they came in and sat down, they had saved a, a couple million dollars, but it was all in their 401ks and IRAs, mm -hmm. all in a bucket that hadn't been taxed yet. And when we started to do the the tax projections, when we were looking at you know projecting out some future growth and then the required distributions that they have to take from that bucket, at starting at 72, but then when you get into your 80s and 90s, we're talking about longevity, right? You get into your 80s and 90s and those required distributions go up more and more. Next thing you know, their taxable income was more in the future than what it actually was today. Because you, then you add on pensions and you add on social security, you add on rental income. And they're like, wait a second. So if we're deferring the money today, but our taxable income is going to be higher in the future, we're actually just costing ourselves more in taxes. I, yep, yep, that's what's happening. So unfortunately, they hadn't practiced tax diversification, which they are now. We've switched around where they're saving money to. And so I think the way that people can plan for these uncertainties is putting together a tax projection, looking at all of your sources of income, not only today, but also throughout your future. Just putting some projections to it. Again, living in the gray area. And then based on that, implementing tax diversification, meaning which bucket tax buckets are you saving your money to, into? Utilizing brokerage accounts, utilizing the Roth 401k or Roth IRAs, and still maybe utilizing your 401k or IRA, but utilizing tax diversification so when it does come to retirement, you don't have all of your money in one bucket, which could potentially put you at a higher taxable income in the future. And it all depends on which tax rates go, where tax rates go to. So if you've got your money in different tax buckets, no matter which direction the tax rates go, you've got money that can support you in, in different ways when you need to make withdrawals. And then just doing year by year strategy reviews and discussions to update any of the decisions that you had made previously. And I think going through that process will really help put together a good plan and strategy, no matter which way the tax rates go in the future. And the good thing that, too that you do, and I know that you're, you know, you, you really key in on taxes quite a bit with your clients. There's actually a free guide on the website right now that you can unlock hidden tax saving opportunities. All I have to do is go to lifemoneyshow.com slash taxes. 
and this is a great opportunity too, Scott, to just uh, for somebody on their own to get some tax planning tips, right? Yeah, it's a like you said, lifemoneyshow.com slash taxes. It's a great guide to help people understand the different strategies that they can utilize from a tax, I'll say a long-term tax reduction standpoint. And not only so it's strategies that they can utilize today to maybe reduce their taxes for this year, but also strategies and ideas that they might want to implement so they're not in the same situation as the the story that I shared with you here today, where your taxable income and taxes in your future could be then all of a sudden higher than where they're at today. So great guide. Um, we've had a lot of people download it and found it to be helpful. And so hopefully that uh, you will as well. All right. Continuing on planning for retirement uncertainties. The fourth one on our list here is inflation. Well, Scott, I know for many years, people probably talked about knowing what inflation is. Oh, yeah, we got to plan for it. Our money's going to lose a little bit of value. But hey, today, I think we're all very aware of what inflation means to our bottom line. So how do you prepare for someone? I know nobody's expecting 8 9% inflation, but how do you position someone so that they are ready for it if uh, we have the spike like we're having? It's hard to ignore those 8 and 9% numbers, isn't it, Ben? Yep, sure is. <laughs> That's for sure. And then the other thing to think about is um, healthcare costs, not only inflation, but healthcare costs as well. You look at like a nursing home at $100,000 a year, and those costs continue to go up. I thought I saw um, one stat, and don't quote me on this one, but just saying like those costs could double over the next 15 years. Um, That's a lot. And the mistake I'll start with I'll start with the mistake again and then how to plan the mistake that I find and it was something that we talked about earlier in longevity is that I see that when people go into retirement that their minds say oh I'm no longer working I don't have that company paycheck coming in anymore so I better shift my funds over to be really conservative and really safe and while we do need some conservatism or some safety in the account, you can actually become too conservative. And so how to plan or or what to incorporate in your plan is that you need money in the growth side. You need money in equities on the stock side of your portfolio, continuing to grow to help you keep up with inflation over the long period of time. And will it always be nine and eight and a half percent? I'm sure again, those will, those will revert back to, you know, the long-term averages, which are depending on when you look at the time frames, you're looking at anywhere from maybe three to 4%. Um, so it'll all revert back, but even to stay above the average, we're just going to need money and equities growing for us. And so I find that people go too conservative. The other thing to help keep up with the cost of healthcare going up is to you know look into some long-term care planning and so that way in the event that you need that kind of help and support you've got a plan and a policy that'll help you pay for it and pay for the costs that have gone up or that other option is is that you've made that decision to pay for it out of out of your funds so need money growing and look into long-term care planning All right, one more on the list here to wrap things up. And this is the one that pops up on us and we're just never ready for it. Unexpected expenses or purchases, right? You need a new roof, uh, you know, maybe you have a water leak or all of a sudden you need a new vehicle, whatever it is, these expensive purchases can kind of hit you out of nowhere. If you don't have that money saved or set aside for it, it can kind of put a little dent into your retirement. Yeah, actually I've had a a few clients this year where weren't planning on it, but now they've decided to, one decided to move. One decided to move, basically, you know, completely renovate their entire home. And the big mistake that I see, but we had actually um, already implemented the the planning. So they these clients didn't have, I'll say, the big mistake that I typically see. The big mistake I typically see is that they've got all of their money in one tax bucket and no cash in savings. And that just creates a really stressful situation when this comes up. It does a couple things. With no money in savings, can you really afford, you know, um, and when I say savings, I mean like the emergency fund, um, basically something outside of your your 401k um, to help make those immediate down payments. 
Because the mistake, what it can lead to is let's just say all of a sudden you have to make a $200,000 down payment and the only bucket that you have to go to to get that money is your 401k. Taking $200,000 out of your 401k, well, that could push you up into a higher tax bracket, costing you more in taxes on that money. And so how to plan for this is a couple things. Make sure that you've got a fully funded reserve fund. You've got your rainy day fund. You've got some money in cash. So if it is just the new roof or a new furnace, you've got some money to go to and get it. But if you have bigger purchases like a new car or a new house or you're moving and you need that down payment, um, tax diversification is really important. Having money in the different tax buckets allows us then for these clients it allowed us to go and grab the sums of money that they need but not throw them into a new tax bracket not put them into a higher tax bracket um, as they withdraw this money so having that tax diversification has been a huge help that's what i would implement is just making sure you've got money in different buckets because you never know what's going to come up in your future all right, good stuff as always, Scott. I got a, a mailbag question I want to throw your way before we finish up today's episode. And it came in from Jim, who says, I want to save more for retirement than what I'm allowed to put in my 401k. Where's the best place to put that money? Wow, hey, great job, Jim. Saving past the, the 401k allow, uh, allowed amount. So obviously, Jim's put away a lot of money here. He's doing a great job saving. Um, so first, he's, he's maxing out his 401k. After the 401k, I would suggest, can you put money into your IRA or Roth IRA? Now, there are income limits that if you're above the income limits, then you might not be able to put money into your IRAs or Roth IRAs. Another thing to look at is, does your company uh, have a high deductible health plan? And if so, and you're on it, can you put money into your HSA? Are you maxing the HSA out? And then if you've filled up all of those buckets, then the, the other thing that I would look at or in, I'll say at the same time as these buckets, because we're I was talking about it earlier, is looking at your brokerage account. So really implementing tax diversification here as you're saving, get money into different accounts because if all of Jim's money is in his 401k and you know similar to the stories earlier, if one of those unexpected purchases come up, He's only got one bucket to go and get it from, and he's going to have to pay tax on all that money that comes out. And so what Jim can really do here is take advantage of diversifying himself from a tax standpoint. Thanks for that question, Jim. Uh, we really appreciate it. And hopefully today's episode makes you understand the importance of planning and just being prepared because we know that life's going to throw things our way that we're not ready for. And there's a lot of things that we know about that we just don't know how severe it could be, like stock market returns year to year and tax rates and whatnot. So again, please reach out lifemoneyshow.com. And also, again, that tax guide, some tax saving opportunities. If you're interested in that, all you have to do is visit lifemoneyshow.com slash taxes, and you will get all the info you need right there. All right, Scott. It's a, go ahead. Yeah, it's a, it's a great guide that I think we're really, I mean, we've talked about a few different stories and scenarios, and I'm certain are kind of, you know, turning people's wheels in their minds. And if they're like, wait a second, I don't want to end up in Jim's spot, or I don't want to be the person that, you know, is watching my tax rates and brackets go up in the future because of the planning that I did up front, that tax guide. Um, I think that they'll really enjoy that. It'll help put them on the right track. Indeed. Well, we appreciate you listening to this episode of Your Life, Your Money. For Scott Searns over at the Searns Financial Group, I am Ben George. We'll talk to you next time. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Ben. Searns Financial Group is an independent financial services firm that utilizes a variety of investment and insurance products. Investment advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC. AE Wealth Management and Searns Financial Group, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. 
This podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Siren's Financial Group, Inc. is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein, provided by third parties, have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Siren's Financial Group, Inc.